It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. All right. The two wave loaves. The secret is in the two wave loaves, folks. It's Brother Aaron from God a Minute. Sometimes we just need a picture. A picture says a thousand words. So here is the picture. We've got two loaves. They're a buck each from, uh, from Walmart. And uh, they represent the two loaves in the Feast of the Week. I think the secret is in the loaves, friends. The secret's there. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to go through some stuff over there. We're going to review, review, review. The Feast of Weeks is so special. It's so different than any other Feast of the Lord in Leviticus 23. And it's not just for the Jews. It's not just for the Jews. It's for the Gentiles, too. And like I shared in my video, uh, they were presented together on one platter, according to rabbinical teaching, meaning that there's no longer Jew or Gentile, but now they are one and grafted in. Leviticus 23, when it's talking about the two first fruits, which is the Bakar, if you can see that right here, we've got Bakar, which means... First fruits, to burst forth the womb, to give the birthright, to make a firstborn, to bring forth the first child. And that is uh, part of first fruits. And so when we talk about first fruits on the, on the Feast of Weeks, it's talking about us being the firstborn child. Now, all the feasts, we went through all the feasts, and Christy and I, we studied it all, and we realized... There is no leaven on any other feast. You can read that in Leviticus uh, chapter uh, 23, but also you can go through Numbers. And it says that specifically in uh, Numbers uh, chapter, was it 2, I think? It was Numbers or Leviticus, uh, cha Leviticus chapter 2, as well as Leviticus chapter 6. Every time you present a grain offering, you never present it with leaven. The only time you present leaven is on the Feast of Weeks. Leaven represents, not only does it represent sin, but uh, Jesus equates the kingdom of heaven to leaven. So there's the good leaven and there's the bad leaven. There's the leaven of the Pharisees and there's the leaven of Christ. There's the leaven of Christ. So when these two loaves are offered up to God, to the Father, on the Feast of Weeks, and you but in the good leaven, the leaven of Christ, that is the only way that you can be presented to the Father with the leaven of Christ. But these are called first fruits. What you're looking at is called the first fruits. So the first fruits is only presented to God on the Feast of Weeks. You don't offer the first fruits any other time. Now, Jesus. The, the one bagel, the one wave loaf was offered when he was risen on the grave on the, on the uh, right here, right? The, he was offered on uh, Bereshit, uh, the Feast of Bereshit. That's Leviticus 23, verse 10 and 11. That was him. And so since he went up first, remember what Jesus said, take this, bread, this represents my body. So bread represents the body. Well, so too does this bread represent our body, but because the first fruit of Christ that he went up and he is holy, when we get grafted into him, then we are holy too. We are the first fruits because him and himself and his first fruits was holy. The only time that you present the first fruits of the Jew and the Gentile is on Feast of Weeks. Now, we know that Christ is the first fruit. Are we a first fruit? We sure are. Let's go open the Bible and, and clarify that. And that's in James. I got some pencil marks here. But here I'll put it a bit closer. And that's James 118. Pay attention here. There's a big there's a big wowza. Hmm. And uh, here you can do this too and do that and zoom in a bit. There you go. There we go. And uh, can you see 118 there? Yep. So of his own he brought forth to us uh, sorry. Of his own he Will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creature? So there is a big deal here. So James 1.18 is telling us that we are the first fruits. We're the first fruits. But the only time you present a first fruit is on feast of weeks because we have the leaven of Christ. And leaven helps you rise. And also, it tells us that the, these two wave loaves, 
the Jew and the Gentile, once you mix the yeast and you bake it, it, be, it gets transformed and we become a new creature, cre creature because of what Christ did on his Feast of First Fruits. So we get grafted in Romans 11. Now what does it say in Romans 11? And it says this. It says, can you see it okay? So, for if the first fruits is holy, the whole lump is also holy. So that's Christ. Christ is the first one. So now that we get grafted in, we become holy. All right? So that's that one. And then what does it say in Romans 8? It says uh, right here, for we know that, just maybe zoom out a bit, I can't see it. Uh, yeah. Uh, for we know that the whole creature creation groans and labors with birth pains together that's what this word bakar means it's a birth pain it's it's a it's the it's the firstborn that bakar word h1069 um in in the, the feast of weeks so birth pains together but not only that but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit you see that we have the first fruits of the spirit where are we? There, there we go. There we go. Sorry. First fruits of the Spirit. Doing good. Tracking with me. And what was the other verse that I wanted to share? I, I had Romans 11, and um, the papers are flying everywhere here. Okay. We have 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Zooming in and out. Zooming in and out. Where's our Corinthians? Where's our, where's our friend, the Corinthian man? Is that 1 Corinthians there, 15? Oh. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to read from here. And... Uh, you got it? Good. Mm -hmm. All right. But now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits. So that's the feast of Rashith. Christ has become our feast of Rashith, right? Remember that, that word we talked about um, the fe when he rose on the feast of first fruits. So because he did that, that he makes us holy as the second bread of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also comes the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his order. Here we go. Christ, the first fruits, so the feast of Rashith. But here's the big one, after those who are in Christ at his coming. So we are, the, we are basically the second first fruits. We are the Bakar. We are that same word that's found in the Feast of Weeks. After we're bring it, brought to Christ after his coming, look at this next verse. Then comes the end. Okay, so Christ is the first fruits. Afterward, those who are Christ at his coming, so we will be connected with him at his coming. Then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet oh my goodness so that's what we have here now we have we basically god is, has everything on on his appointments right so here's another cool thing sister uh, uh carla presented a really awesome thing where, where she was talking about the, the rainbow and she was saying that the feast of weeks is um it's associated with the color green i think that's awesome she i i would just I would flop the colors. She she said that this was Passover, and then she went like that. I would I would suggest the other way, because on Passover his blood was spilt. So I would just associate the, the red color with uh, with Passover. I would associate the orange color with the feast of unleavened bread. I would associate uh, the yellow uh, with the feast of first fruits when Jesus rose, because he is the Son of God. You know the color sun, green with the feast of weeks, and so on. Right, and um, th these colors might be a little off when I drew them. But she associated green with the Feast of Weeks, right in the middle. And so she also associated green with uh, the middle of the, the, um, the lampstand. But what it, she, the one amazing thing that she pointed out was that in Revelation 4, verse 3, when John's in the throne room and there's a rainbow around the throne, hello, hmm. the, he sees the, em the green emerald. He sees the green emerald. And here's another thing, too. Oh, before I show you this chart. Let's just talk openly here. You don't need to see what I'm going to present. But, you know, there, people are making a case for tabernacles. Here's the thing, though. Uh, all the Feasts of the Lord are amazing. They're important. But pay attention to this one word in the Feast of Tabernacles. So do all this tabernacles. But and he tells us why he's establishing the Feast of Tabernacles. In Leviticus 23, verse 43. That your generations may know... But that Hebrew word, no, is yada, 
and it's H3045. No, what? what? What are you trying to tell us? Why, why did you institute this feast? So that you know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. So the Feast of Tabernacles is to remind Israel that he brought them out of Egypt. So they remember that he brings them from one land to another. And what does it say in Revelation 21, verse 3? Right at the end of the story, right at the very end of the story, Revelation 21, verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. But it says here in Revelation 21, verse 3, at the end of the story, that he's going to come down and tabernacle with us. But he's also going to take Israel out of the wilderness and go bring him from one land to another. And he told us that the Feast of Tabernacles is to remember continually for the millennial kingdom. So the Feast of Tabernacles is for the remembrance of Israel, that he brought them from one land to another. So the Feast of Tabernacles is really, it makes way more sense that the Feast of Tabernacles will be fully fulfilled after his second coming when he comes to dwell with us and tabernacle with us. I don't think it's actually a rapture feast. Now, here's another fun thing. Here's the math. Here's where this really gets exciting. The Feast of Tabernacles is only the only one that has an eighth day. It's got an eighth day celebration. And so if when you look at this, I, 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 I had this before and if you go from if if the rapture happens here on feast of weeks you count from this trumpet to over here and that's number 50 remember we did that whole rainbow thing we were counting there's going to be seven uh feasts of the lord every year so that would be number 50 when when trumpets and day of atonement uh happen together at the second coming if that is the second coming right but check out this this is the feast of tabernacles so one two three four five six seven eight on the eighth feast of tabernacles that is when Christ will actually dwell with us. I think that's why there's an eighth day on the Feast of Tabernacles, because he wants to show us the seven-year plan as well. So he comes, second coming, Day of Atonement, and trumpets come together. Likely that is probably the Jubilee year. And then he tabernacles with us on the eighth tabernacles. And if you read through the Feast of Tabernacles, you'll notice that there's an eighth day. And when you look at all the sacrifices and offerings, it's a party. It's like 13 bulls and uh, uh, bulls and all these lambs and everything like that. I was going to make a list of all, all the offerings, but really what I wanted to do is this. Here's the conclusion. and Here's the overall summary of what we got here. We got to bring you back to the bread. The secret is in the bread. Okay, the first fruits. There's the first fruits of Christ and there's the first fruits of us. There's the first fruits of what's called the, the Rashith, which is H7225. And that Rashith is the same word as the first word in the Bible. Barashit, in the beginning. He told us that in the first word of the Bible, that he was going to die on the cross for us, right? Barashit. And then he rose on the feast of Barashit, essentially. Rashit. That's Jesus. And because he becomes holy, we become holy. And why is there two loaves? It's because there's no longer Jew or Gentile. That's what Romans 10 says. There's no longer Jew or Gentile. Gentile. It's You can only get into heaven with the leaven of Christ. The only people that will be standing in the throne room on rapture day is those who believe in Jesus Christ, who believe in the finished work of the cross. And that's the leaven of Christ. And the only time in the year that you can present the first fruits, and we are the first fruits according to James 1.18 and 1 Corinthians 15 and Romans 8, where we have a groaning of the first fruits. We are the first fruits. That is our identity in Christ. We've been grafted into the tree. The only time to present the first fruits to the Father, only one year, one time a year, and this feast is for the Gentile and the Jew. It's not just a Jewish feast. He's including the Gentiles into this feast. He's grafting it into this feast. The only time that you present the first fruits to the Father and wave it in the air is on the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks is our day. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful feast day for the Gentile. And I don't know if it's going to happen this year. I'm just a human being. But 
what a beautiful thing to understand that we are the first roots because the because Christ's work is finished on the cross and now we get grafted in and we are presented and weighed in the air as first roots to the Lord so I'm pretty excited about this feast of weeks now you guys understand now I'm pretty understandable I don't know again if it's gonna happen but man it's gonna be a really fun thing if it does um, in terms of dates, I'm looking at June 16th because I'm doing a simple count from one Sunday to the next. If for some weird, strange reason it's a week later, so be it, Sunday, June 23rd. If we pass this one, we'll see what God says. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep on going here, right? We'll just keep on exploring and investigating. But the Feast of Weeks, this year, for some reason, I never saw it like this before. I've always kind of got to it. I'm like, oh, okay, Feast of Weeks, I don't really get it, you know, the, all this stuff they got to sacrifice. But this year, for some reason, it just makes complete sense to me. I, I don't know why. I have no clue. Maybe he blinded me on purpose over the years. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Take it all to the Lord, guys. I pray that you believe in the finished work of the cross. And if you do, you or Gentile will be raised up at some point. And it looks like Feast of Weeks is, is the one. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay? God bless you. See you in the clouds. Go, Jesus, go. Thanks for the photography, uh, Christy. I love that. Hallelujah, I'll see you in the rapture.